Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to build a limit switch that when triggered will send an SMS text message to your phone. We're going to be putting this one in our 3D printer so that every time it returns home, we were sent a, we're sent a text that uh, will let us know when our print's finished. Um, We've oftentimes found that when we have a print running, we'll, we won't check when it's ready, and then it will just sit ready for hours on end. And so th this will help us be a little bit faster in starting up the next print. Uh, so let's get started. We're gonna first assemble the circuit, and then we're gonna go build the firmware and eventually the application. Um, so we'll go ahead and assemble the circuit now. What you're gonna need is one Q client, a slightly modified limit switch, um, that has this little 3D printed form will give you the 3D printed files or the STL files. Um, however, you don't need this form. You can use a piece of cardboard with some hot glue and popsicle sticks, um, whatever, whatever you want. This is very simple. Just hold it in place in our 3D printer. Um, and then on the end of this limit switch, we, we made an extension using a bit of zip tie and uh, hot glue. Then we have two wires soldered onto the end here. And we're also gonna be using a screwdriver. Um, so on the limit switch, we have wires leading to the normally open and the closed pins. Uh, you're going to want to go ahead and make those same connections yourself. Um, and then from the normally open pin, we are going to connect that wire, that lead, to the 5 volt port on the builder base. And then we'll, we'll connect the, the lead that's connected to the open pin to the GP0 port on the builder base. Um, now this is a super simple circuit and that, that's all that we need to do for it. So basically once this, this, uh, this tab is depressed, it will send a signal into GP0. And then from there in our application, we will have it set up so that once that port is triggered, a text message is sent to our phone. So now we're gonna go ahead and make sure the Twilio service is set up and running, and we're also gonna build the firmware. So navigate over to your home screen on your server and go to the library page. Then you can go to services and just check to ensure that you have Twilio installed. And then what you're also gonna to wanna to do is then navigate to the services tab on the left side of the screen and make sure that your Twilio service is running. Um, if it isn't, you can go through the setup process um, via our video. You can find that on our channel. It's just called Twilio Setup um, or something to that effect. Uh, and next, you're gonna wanna navigate to the firmware page. You're gonna go ahead and hit Create New, and we'll name this one Limit Switch SMS. Now, once you have that file created, go ahead and hit the plus Add Hardware button and just add a digital in, um, or actually add a button a button driver to the firmware. We'll just call this one button. Um, now configure the driver to use GPIO and then set the pin to GP0, debounce to enabled and pin, pin mode to input pull down. Go ahead and save that. And now upload this firmware to the client that you have the circuit attached to. And while that's uploading, we can go ahead and create the application. So navigate over to the application page, hit create new, and then we'll name this one limit switch SMS, the same as the firmware. So now once we're here, we can go ahead and add a hardware button under input control. And we'll just name this one limit switch. And then go ahead and add a digital toggle code objects. Um, the reason why we're adding this object is that with our printer, once it returns home, it goes down, returns home, pops up, and then goes back to that home position one more time. And so by adding this toggle, it will allow us to only uh, get sent one message instead of multiple. So from the state port on the button, connect that to the toggle port on the digital to toggle object. Um, we're gonna go ahead and name that object toggle. And then from there, we're going to add a static string object. 
And from the out port on the digital toggle object, we're going to connect that to the trigger in port on the static string object. We're going to name the static string object print ready, and then add, then make the string on the static string object print ready. Add an exclamation if you'd like. Um, and so basically, every single time you modify one of the ports on these objects, please be sure to save your properties. If you don't and you navigate away from that object by selecting another object, all of the changes you made will be lost. So it's just a really good habit to get into. Um, to save your properties every time you make an adjustment to, um, to an object. So now go ahead and add the Twilio service object. So the way in which the Twilio service object works is you have an SMS message import and the telephone number import. And so the SMS message port is set to trigger. So whenever that port receives a, a new bit of text, a new string of text, the, the message is sent out and you're connected with the Twilio service and then that, that text will be sent to your phone. Now the way by default it's set up, if you enter a phone number, a text will not be sent. So the only way to send a message is to have a new text string sent into the SMS message import. You can change it in the properties panel. You can also go hit on telephone number and make it so that once a new telephone number is sent, um, that'll trigger the mess text message but I'm just gonna keep it in the default configuration for now. So we'll name the Twilio object Twilio. And then from the string port, we'll connect the SMS message. Uh, we'll connect that to the SMS message port. And then we will have the input number um, interface objects. And we'll just name this phone number. And then you can drag the number out port to the telephone number in port on the Twilio object. And this should be it for the application. So now I'm just gonna walk you through base, the basic programming behind it. We receive an input from the button. The button then triggers the digital toggle code object. That will then toggle it on. And then a trigger will be sent out of the out port on the digital toggle object to the static string, which will trigger the string of print ready to be sent to the SMS message port on the Twilio object. So now once that occurs, the Twilio, once, once the Twilio object receives that trigger from the string, it will send that message to the phone number that's designated in the phone number port on the Twilio service. So that's it for the application. Now we can go ahead and run the application and we'll, we'll actually get to see this in action. Um, so go ahead and hit return to application and hit the play button. And now you'll be taken to the application mapping screen. Go ahead under limit switch, um, hit the button, and then under client, select the button object or driver, and then hit save plus run. Now this is running. And once we hit this switch, we should receive a message on our phone. Um, unfortunately, we have terrible, terrible cell reception here at our studio. So we're gonna have to do this back at the workshop. Um, one, where we have better reception, and two, where our 3D printer is located. So we'll see you back over there. All right, so now we're back at the workshop, and we're going to go ahead and install the limit switch in our 3D printer. Uh, to do this, we've added some Velcro to the back of the limit switch and to the back of the client. And we added Velcro to the side of the 3D printer and inside of it. So we'll go ahead and stick this client onto the side of our 3D printer. We'll supply it with power. Then we'll wrap around and install the limit switch in our 3D printer. We're going to want to make sure that the limit switch does not actually come into contact with your build plate. Now, meaning the, the 3D printed form and the body of the switch, the only thing you want coming in contact with your build plate is the zip tie extension that we've put on here. Um, if any other part comes into contact with the build plate, it could cause alignment issues and it could actually end up breaking your printer. So just proceed with caution uh, in regards to that. So now we're gonna go back over to our server. You're gonna to wanna to make sure your client is paired with the server. Now we're gonna go ahead and start that application. You're gonna make wanna make sure that your application is mapped. And then we're gonna go ahead and save and run that. So now we'll have our build plate return to home. 
So we're gonna go ahead and lower that. You can see that the limit switch has been triggered. And the text has been received on our phone. So there you have it. Hope you enjoyed this project. If you did, consider liking the video and check out the other videos that we have available on our channel. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video. Check out the rest of our videos. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the notification button for updates. You can also follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.